recording here. So that is recording on there, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on um, on the waveform here. It's going to look really big. It's because I zoomed it really big. Hold on. There we go. And, but I want you to be able to see that's why. So uh, go ahead, uh, transmit there, and then uh, I'll try to adjust it to where it is exactly so you can see the numbers yourself. And uh, this way you can do it. But say what you're doing so this way you'll have it on there so you can see exactly what you did when you replay the video. This is uh, AC10. Back to you, W3ZG. Okay, um, AC10, this is W3ZG. Did, didn't know if you got over there yet or not. Yeah, you got a copy on me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just got a copy now. Okay, yeah, go ahead and transmit. I'm recording right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move some things here. So uh, make it a little long wind so this way I could move a couple of things so you can see when I when you replay this video. Okay, AC10, Adrian in Springfield, Massachusetts. This is W3ZG, and we're Bob from Orfield, PA. Uh, yes, we'll be curious to see uh, how wide this is and uh, also uh, how far down it's going. I've been told by various people of 70 to 80 cycles on the low side, so just, just curious if that's what you're seeing. And uh, So we, we are running this thing supposedly at the 50 to 3,050 bandwidth. And uh, also, though, I am uh, kind of punching up the audio at 2,700 cycles with a with a, a very wide bandwidth. So hopefully this is long enough for you to uh, have copied everything I've said, and we'll go back to you at AC10 from W3ZG. Okay, so I have it on video, that part. What I don't have is, like, the numbers where it tells me um, what's the word I'm looking for. You know how you set your audio from either from 20 to 3,000 or 3,500? Uh, it's not like the now where it will pop up every single number on there. Uh, I am trying to look for something on here to see if I can change that, but I, I'm not sure if I could. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go into my receive here, and I'm going to change uh, one of my things here to a 3.5 to see if that even comes close to you on a 3.5. I mean, I transmit at 3.5 myself sometimes, especially on... on on 40 meters when there's not a lot of people I like to transmit 4k wide because it sounds really good uh, but uh, if it's crowded of course I go back down to three so we're gonna do one more time there uh, on your next go around there I'm gonna re I'm still recording as I speak so let's see what happens okay okay AC10 from W3ZG okay That's fine yeah well this will, this will be be curious um, and you know, I, I've had some people send me recordings before, uh, and I, actually, I'm surprised this is at this setting. It's it, it's wide enough uh, for uh, SS3K. You know, quality AM. Uh, I I think I, I have to go check my settings. In some cases, depending on how I have this thing set up, I uh, to get to like the 4K wide, I sometimes have to actually turn the radio off and hold two buttons down, and then and then turn it on, and that that automatically shifts it to 4K. But I, I can set it up, uh, I think if I want to run it at the 3, 50 to 3,050 that I currently am using, um, I, I think if I want to go to 4K wide, I actually have to turn the radio on and off. But uh, anyway, so uh, this thing probably gives you enough time to see or hear whatever you, you want to look at, and uh, we'll turn it back to you, AC10 from W3ZG. W3ZG, yeah, it's definitely running about 3.5, 3.5 uh, kilohertz wide, dear, which uh, to me, personally, that's not a problem because I do it all the time. And like I said, the audio is coming in clear. You're going to see the waterfall. I, uh, I made it bigger so you can see, you know, how, you know, if it's too wide for you or whatever, it's on you. To me, I think it's perfect. Um, and then I also shrinked it here so this way you can see the waterfall also on the video when you speak again and stuff like that. And uh, I, I, to be honest, what did you say you're running? Because your, your audio sounds really good, especially when I put it on that 4K uh, receive on my end. It, it sounded really good. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I get really, really good audio reports with this thing, which, which is, yeah, is somewhat surprising. And I, I probably took about two years before I finally got to the end product of setting up the EQ uh, various, various ways. Um, you know, again, I guess what I'm also is still surprised out that it's going out uh, to 3.5 wide. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd be curious what happens if if I set this thing back on the 129 and see what is it's coming out there. But uh, I, I won't bore you with all with all that stuff. But uh, I don't know. I it, it must be a combination of whatever my voice is like, and, and the microphone and the radio. But uh, uh, and, and also you know how I have the, the equalizer set up. And uh, you know I, I guess. Uh, I don't run a lot of processing on this, but uh, I mean, if, if I'm looking at the, uh, the compression meter, there, there's plenty there. But it's uh, I'm only running like a 10 out of a, uh, a hundred uh, range on the radio, so it's not. Uh, hopefully, it's being being pretty pretty low drive and that stuff. So, are, will, are you going to be sending that to my uh, what's on my QRZ account as far as my email? Yeah, I'm going to try to send it to you. Hopefully, the file's not too big. If not, I'll, what I'll do is I'll update it, I mean, upload it to my YouTube channel. I started a little small YouTube channel. There's nothing big. I'm not famous, and so don't worry. And uh, I'll put your call sign on it, and uh, this way you can watch the video if it's too big for me to uh, send to you. It's probably going to be either 1080p or uh, maybe 4K. I'm not sure which one's going to be uploaded. But, uh, yeah, you'll definitely be able to see it. And uh, I'll definitely have it sometime this week, no later than Friday for sure, depending on uh, how busy I get because I, I do work. So, but, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll even put it up later on today. And if I do, I'll definitely send you an uh, uh, email via with the link or you could just look me up on YouTube and um, to your video so this way you can see it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, Andy, let me just let me just try a quick experiment here. I just want to just do one other thing here. Let me just. I'm going to switch this thing back, and I don't expect you to record it or do anything. But uh, I'm just going to go back to uh, 100 to 29 and see how what that changes. Uh, so now we're running 100 to 2900 bandwidth, and I, if you got it opened up to 3500, I, I, I'm imagining you're you're going to see it's more narrow now. Um, uh, from my prior experiments, it didn't look like it looked like this thing. If I ran it on uh, 100 to 29, or if I went to 50 to 3,050, I don't think it changed the the bottom end of of the audio. I mean, I think it probably was still 70 to 80 on the low side. So I've been on the 100 to 29. Uh oh, something happened. Uh, now I'm back to 50 to 3,050. Just curious on your receive side if that made any difference. Oh, yeah, it definitely did. Uh, audio, I think it made it a little different, definitely, as in waterfall, as in uh, you'll see it because you'll see the difference uh, on, on the video. It did spread out a little more, that's all. Okay, well, well good. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I'm not seeing any reason to be to even, even on an uncrowded band necessarily to go up to the 4K, but uh, I, from what I, some of my prior notes, I, I think that thing really was going up to maybe about 4,200 on the high end, which uh, is plenty wideband enough, uh, especially for my Yezu radio. I, I have a, I had a 7610, and I guess some of the frustration is on those radios along, and I also have sitting next to this uh, 7300, and of course, uh, you know, ICOM is maybe maybe rightly so. They they're limiting everything to their 100 to 29, and uh, uh, they obviously have some pretty tight skirts on those because I don't think they go above that on a scope at all. <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm happy with the Yezu. It gives me the ability to play with this a little bit. Back to you, AC10 from W3ZG. Uh, W3ZG, this is AC10. No, no, your audio sounds good, man. I definitely wouldn't even mess with it, uh, make it sh try to make it smaller. Uh, the only reason I'm just running, I'm running 3K right now is because I thought I was going to go on 20 meters. Like I said, if, when I get on here on 40 meters, uh, if the bands are not busy, I like to usually run just a 3.5 actually across the board if they're not busy. But uh, if I'm on 40 meters, I usually try to run 4K wide. And I have mine set all the way from, uh, I'm going to say my low is going to be about 10, 10 hertz. 
up to 3,000 at the moment, but I run it from 10 hertz all the way to 3,000 hertz there. And as for the audio, uh, depending on, I got, I would have to look at my EQ here, how I'm running the on the low end there and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, uh, your your thing sounds great. It sounds really good. I I, I don't think that uh, uh, me personally, I, I think I would leave it alone. As in uh, audio quality, as in you know EQing in it, all this and that. As in. Uh, I do like the one you use, the three part with the one I call three point five better. Uh, I think it sounds really good. Okay, uh, AC one zero from W three ZG. Yeah, well, now, well th thank you. And it, I'll be. Uh, uh, so we're were you sending that file out, or and, and again, it, it sounds like maybe it's too big, and I'll just uh, mark my my calendar here to check later in the week to, to, to see, you know, when you published it so it doesn't go out of my older brain here. <laughs> so, anyway, Adrian, you, uh, you mentioned that, that you work. I was just curious what you do. Uh, age here is 75, and I probably haven't been working for the last, well, officially, I, about a year ago, I escrowed my real estate license, but uh, didn't really do much work in it since uh, 2019 when the pandemic hit. Uh, I had finished up with some really large transaction, and I kind of pretty much called it quits after that. So I'm just curious what, what you're doing up there in Massachusetts. Back to you. Well, at the moment, I I'm uh, I work I work for the United States Postal Service. I'm actually what they call a vehicle operation assistant. So I guess a fancy name for the word dispatch. Uh, I drove for 25 years before I decided to walk in the office, and that's what I've been doing for the last eight years. Okay, fine. Well, actually, I, I have a friend locally that uh, he had various jobs, and he actually had an accounting degree, but uh, I don't think he ever really used that to its, its full limits. Um, yeah. And he later decided that uh, he needed to have somewhere that was going to pay him a pension, and, and so he didn't even, I'm sure he didn't even have close to 25 years in, but uh, but he went to work and he was a rural postal delivery person here out in the country. And uh, I guess he seemed to like that quite fine. And, and now he has whatever pension he has along with his various stocks. And uh, he seems to be uh, sitting pretty for the rest of his life. Uh, so, so, so very fine. I, I, I'm assuming your, your post office also has a nice retirement plan. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at maybe, I think I'm going to stick around there 10 more years, and then uh, I might call it quit there. Uh, 10 years more will give me about 21 years at the post office itself. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to be sitting pretty there, hopefully, if everything works well. And I just purchased a travel trailer camper. Uh, so I bought a 2023, so... All that, that should be paid off by the time I retire, and then hopefully if I uh, maintain it and, and uh, take care of it, I'll have it long after that as well. So we'll see what happens. I, I try to look at things at one day at a time and uh, take it from there. But, uh, yes, I know we have to plan for the future. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that, that is. Uh, so what is, your, what is your current age? I am uh, right now 51 years old, 5'1". Oh, boy, if I could only go back. <laughs> very, <laughs> that would be nice. Very good uh, at 51. Well, I, actually, I'm, I'm happy. Like, Health-wise, I, I still can get around. I, I go to the park and do some brisk walking. Uh, well, I, I'm waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit. Uh, last year, it was probably like seven, eight months in a row. I don't think I missed a day of that. If it was going to – usually when it rains in the summer, it's in, in, like early afternoon or later, so – I uh, I don't think I missed a day pretty much for six seven months running and uh, also like I uh, have a, a Trek dual sport bike that I, I like to ride around and and two which is is fun I go to local rails trails and and do that kind of stuff so uh, fortunately I can still get out there and uh, and do things and uh, I think I still somewhat have some of my wits left uh, although that's that's certainly debatable. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a very fine. So, prior to to your son, were you running any uh, uh, more conventional uh, rigs, uh, non SDR stuff before? Uh yeah. Well, my actually my first radio was because I only been a ham for about uh let's see, 
uh, I think it was 2021 is when I got I started. I can't remember. It's a, it's been only about two years. But my first purchase was actually uh, Yesu FT 991 Alpha. I wanted something uh, basically so I could do like parks on the air. Uh, I wanted something portable, but at the same time, I wanted something that I would have everything, two meters and all this and that. So I just, at the moment, I didn't want to go buy no more radios. Uh, you know, I'm just getting into the hobby, and the hobby could be expensive. I know that for sure now because I actually have my uh, Yagi antenna right here in the basement waiting for me to buy a tower one of these days. So, yeah, I started backwards. I bought my uh, beam antenna first, and then... Uh, working myself down all the way back to the shack there. Uh, but yeah, uh, before, prior to that, uh, being a truck driver, I always been around uh, Citizen Band Radio, which I loved at the time. And I, I, I actually, I probably will. I don't know. I haven't got on it lately. I do have like four or five uh, Citizen Band radios that I always kept. I never sold them. So I do have them here. And uh, I still have my old base... Uh, um, 10 meters, no, not 10 meters, 11 meters, whatever you want to call it, you know, citizen bands, uh, antenna that I might throw up one of these days and uh, get on the CV just to see if uh, people around here locally still on it there. QSL? Hey, AC10 from W3ZG. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, very, very fine on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a, a Yagi at this point. I've had a thing up about 20 years of this QTH. And I, I have a 33-foot 30, 30, uh, crank-up tower, which I, I was smart enough years ago to, to, to buy the, the crank-up, and it's one that um, I can actually uh, get up to it uh, with a ladder against the antenna when I do it. I, it, it. I can crank it down to just about 11 feet. Uh, so I, I purposely did that, so as I got older, if I had to change out coax and things on the Aggie, I could do it. Um, <laughs> So I, I have a, a Mosley TA-53M, which is a, a four-element, uh, three bands on 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20, and um, it works really well. The, the, the radio was a compromise because it's only on a 14-foot boom, uh, but it, it does have uh, you know, about 6 dBs of gain on, on uh, I think, most of the... Uh, uh, of the bands, uh, and what they what they gave up with a short boom on that was uh, the front to back is nothing to speak about. But uh, you know, I guess the good news is is that you don't you don't have to swing the antenna around uh, 360 degrees necessarily because you get a lot of gain off the back of it. Although uh, it still makes some sense. I, I haven't really uh, played with the antenna. I'm a little bit scared if uh, if that. Uh, if the motor goes out, uh, I, it, it, the antenna is such that uh, if I want to lower the, 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 the tower, I have this thing close enough to the house that I could just clear. I could probably go up to about a 16-foot boom and still be able to, to have the antenna not hit the house. But it's got to be pointed at about 90 degrees for it and not to be hitting the gutters when I lower it. So uh, anyway, actually, uh, years back, I, I had an abundance of caution. I, I bought a brand-new... Uh, uh, rotor for it, and uh, that's been sitting in a box. And it's a it's the same basic motor that my other one has, but has a little bit a, a more a, a better display and uh, the way that operates. Uh, so anyway, that's sitting in a box. I don't know if I'll ever get to use it, but uh, if not, I guess my estate can go sell the thing as a brand new in the box. <laughs> but uh, and you know, very, very fine to be in the hobby for a little bit less than two years. Uh, yeah, I've been doing this thing, I think, about 33 years, but I uh, d did have some pretty large gaps in there where uh, where I wasn't on the air. Um, first radio was a, was also a Yezu, was a 767GX, and then uh, later I ended up getting a, kind of the flagship at the time, the FT-1000, which was a, a really an amazing radio back in its time, and then... Uh, uh, then I moved on to the FTDX 5000, and then the 7610 the ICOM, and now we're we're back to the the 101D. So uh, it's been a, a Yezu experience with some side uh, side roads into ICOM. Uh, turn it back to you. <laughs> W3ZG, this is AC10. Yeah, I, uh, I I guess I could call myself, even though I don't have uh, more than one Yezu, I still like Yezu because my uncle used to have uh back in the day was the 
Uh, it was the 101 uh, um, E or something. Yeah, it's the older versions uh, back then. I forgot what it was called. Oh, my God. I think it was a 101. Yeah, it was the, either a 101 or E. I, I, I recall because I remember it had 11 meters on it as well, and I, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but I didn't know too much about hand radios back in those days. But, uh, yeah, I remember him having that, and uh, uh, it sounded really good, and uh and I, I, I don't know. I just like Asus, and uh, I was gonna purchase the 101 MP before I purchased this Sun SDR. And after I bought this Sun SDR, I fell in love. I, I just, I, I, I don't see myself buying a Yezu right now because I don't want to buy a radio that I'm gonna have sit here and just look pretty and not use it because I'm gonna be too busy work uh, using the Sun SDR. So that is the only reason I don't have a 101 MP in the shack right now is because I purchased this but otherwise I would have had it and then uh but still in the future you know like I said I've only been around the hobby officially what two years maybe you know and uh I will have more radios and uh the 101 is definitely going here and then I want the I want I think it's the 9000 I believe it is the Yesu uh FT 9000 I think is the one that I want. It looks, I mean, it, it just looks like a gorgeous radio. And I believe it's either 400 watts. I'm not sure if that's what it was. But, uh, you know, I have to re stop this recording because the video is going to get longer and longer here. And, uh, well, after this, I'm going to cancel the recording here. And uh, to uh, Bob, just to let you know, I got to actually go do a couple of things. I will be on the airwaves, though. But I just got to get off the radio for about 10 minutes and stuff like that. So after your last transmission, I'm going to have to say 73 just for a little bit. And I'll be back on for sure later on. Okay, AC10 from W3ZG. Yeah, no, that, that that's fine, Adrian. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really been...